Growing your own herbs has many benefits. They add beauty to the garden, they're good for you, and add flavor to foods. It's also convenient, saves money, educational, therapeutic, and fun. Herbs also make great companion plants as they attract pollinators and repel insect and animal pests from the garden. Hi everyone, Ms. Sela here at Learn to Grow. Today I'm going to show you how to plant a culinary herb garden in containers with some tips along the way. Let's jump right in. If you plan on growing your herbs together, make sure to base it on sunlight, moisture, and soil needs, although they can be planted individually in their own containers. So I placed the herbs into two separate groups. The ones to the right are the woody herbs such as rosemary, sage, oregano, thyme, and lavender. And on to the left are the more tender or softer herbs which consist of basil, parsley, cilantro, and some mint. So the tender herbs to the left will need more moisture and can actually thrive in part shade. These woody herbs prefer a sandy loam, leaner soil. So they won't have to be watered as often, about once a week or once every 10 days during the summer months here in the Pacific Northwest. And these tender herbs prefer moist soil, although like all plants, they need well-draining soil. Now let's talk about sunlight. Now all plants thrive best in full sun, although some can tolerate part shade. These woody herbs will do best in full sun, at least six hours or more, although oregano can tolerate part shade. These tender herbs will tolerate part shade as well, so about four hours to six hours a day. Before putting your potting mix in the pot, make sure to put some rocks in the bottom of your pot. This will allow better drainage. And I'm using a store-bought potting mix. I fill it up about three quarters of the way and I just dig a shallow indent there so we'll go ahead and plant our parsley it's easier to remove the plant from the pots if the soil is moist so you just turn it upside down give it a little squeeze and you want to split the bottom you want to loosen up that those roots so just like that and we'll place it right in our potting hole there. And when you're placing your plants in the pot, you want to keep it in the same level as it was in its original container. And if there's any damaged leaves or dead leaves, go ahead and remove them. Just pinch those off. We'll go ahead and backfill. And just gently press around it. Just like so. Now I'm going to plant the woody herbs together. So I've got my rosemary. Again, same thing with the roots. Gently split that in half, just like so. I'll plant it towards the back. Back fill it. Gently press down. Oregano is going towards the front. Since it's more likely to creep, so it's going to look really nice towards the front of the pot. Got our thyme. Beautiful purple sage. Put this one over here. And lastly, lavender. Back here. If you like, you can place your plant labels in the container. Thyme. Lavender. This is the orange mint. Such a beautiful plant. If you decide to grow any of the mint plants, it's best to put them in a container. If you put them in your garden, they will take over. They tend to grow these runners. Show you. There's a runner here and there, so they spread sideways. And it's even better if you can get them into a window box style container because they grow sideways. This pot's okay for now. I can always transplant it later. Okay, 
After planting, make sure to water your plants. Now I'm going to lightly water them today because we are supposed to get a lot of rain in the next couple of days. Also when watering, try to get the water onto the soil as there might be disease causing pathogens that can splash up onto the leaves of your plants. And one last tip on watering, especially if you are growing in containers, the soil will dry up quicker. So especially in the summer months, if you live in a warmer area, you can check the soil by just sticking your finger in there. Stick about up to the first line or about an inch down into the soil. And you'll be able to tell if it is dry or moist. And obviously just water the soil so the soil is moist. So it's a good way to indicate if your plants need to be watered. Now let's talk about fertilizing. Since I use the potting mix that contains organic compost and worm castings, there is no need to fertilize for the season. In fact, herbs get most of their energy from the sun, so it is best to plant them in full sun if you can, at least six hours or more. Now some of these herbs are perennial, which means that they will come back year after year, such as the oregano, rosemary, sage, thyme, lavender, as well as mint. Also, some of these perennial herbs are pretty hardy and can tolerate temperatures below freezing. Now that we have the herbs planted, we're going to go over some pruning tips and also take a walk in the garden to show you the other varieties of herbs that I'm growing. Here are some rosemary plants that I'll be pruning back. So when you're pruning your herbs, you can prune up to a third of the plant, no more than a third because you can actually shock the plant and it can potentially die. So when you're pruning, you can prune just the tops and that'll keep your plants compact, improve air circulation so it can prevent diseases and also it'll encourage new growth and your plants can become more bushier if you like it to be more bushier um, it'll actually accelerate growth and it'll produce more foliage for you that you can harvest or even propagate so i'm going to be pruning back just the tops of these plants and that'll keep it from becoming top heavy because they are starting to fall over so you stick your pruning shears and we'll just kind of just prune it just like that There are actually two plants here, so I've got the small section done and we'll go ahead and top this both off. So you can see how tall this plant is, it's about three feet tall. And pruning about a third will be around here. So we'll go ahead and start pruning that off. Look how much better they look. And also remember to prune off any dead stems and or leaves. Keeping your herbs pruned back consistently not only maximizes your harvest and promote new growth, but will also prevent your plants from going to flower and seed. When your herbs start to flower, they start to taste bitter or even lose flavor. If you decide to let them flower for the pollinators, just make sure to cut back the spent flower stalks as soon as they start to dry and before they go to seed. That way, your plants will produce more foliage for you that you can harvest in the season. All right, let's take a look at the rest of the herbs that we are growing so we can give you some more ideas. This one is thyme. Also has some lemon thyme. This is Burgarten sage. This one is lavender, just starting to blossom. Going to leave them for the bees, and as soon as they dry up, I'll be cutting back the flower stalk. And you can cut them back all the way at the base of the stalk. And when you do that, it'll encourage your plant to grow more side stems, resulting in a bushier plant and more foliage. This one is lemon balm, and never let this go to seed. They will spread and take over your garden. This one is oregano. And one thing about planting your herbs in the ground is spacing them out at least 24 to 30 inches apart. When you plant herbs in the ground, if you give them enough space, they will get a lot bigger than growing them in containers. So make sure to space them out properly when you're planting them in the ground. This one starting to emerge is pineapple sage. It's bright red trumpet shaped like flowers attracts hummingbirds and butterflies. And it does have a reminiscent of pineapples. Here are some chives, and also you can divide them on its second season to get more plants. This one is sweet chervil, and it tastes like sweet licorice. 
Love the foliage on these, similar to fern. Here are some cilantro or coriander seedlings that self-seeded from last season. If you decide to let them go to seed, just make sure that you can manage that area or you'll be pulling them out like weeds. Here are some mint, and you have to have some mint if you're going to plant an herb garden. This one is bay leaf or laurel tree, which can grow up to 23 feet in height into a big shrub. But remember, you can keep your plants compact by keeping them pruned back. This one is broadleaf sage, another common culinary herb to add to your kitchen garden. And I also love the violet flowers and so do the bees. Just make sure to cut them back as soon as they dry up. So that way it'll promote new foliage growth for you that you can harvest. Remember to prune your herbs every few weeks during the growing season to encourage healthy growth and prevent flowering. Pruning will also help control their size, keep their shape and prevent suffocation of neighboring plants, which can slow down their growth tremendously. And one last tip, the best time to harvest herbs is in the morning. They will contain the most essential oils. And if you're drying them, try to harvest right before they bloom. This is the stage when the plants will contain the most essential oils. And remember to save some of your trimmings to propagate for more plants to share or freeze and dry to use later. I hope that you found this video helpful and inspired you to grow your own herb garden. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day and happy gardening.